Armor is a protective covering that is used to prevent damage from being inflicted to an object, individual, or vehicle by direct contact weapons or projectiles, usually during combat, or from damage caused by a potentially dangerous environment or action. Personal armor is used to protect soldiers and war animals. Vehicle armor is used on warships and armored fighting vehicles. A second use of the term armor describes armored forces, armored weapons, and their role in combat. After the evolution of armored warfare, mechanized infantry and their weapons came to be referred to collectively as armor. Etymology The word armor was introduced into use in the Middle Ages as a borrowing from the French. It is dated from 1297, as of male, defensive covering worn in combat, from Old French armoire, itself derived from the Latin armatura, arms and, or equipment, with the root armor, arms or gear, personal, armor has been used throughout recorded history, it has been made from a variety of materials, beginning with rudimentary leather protection and evolving through mail and metal plate into today's modern composites. For much of military history the manufacture of metal personal armor has dominated the technology and employment of armor. Armor drove the development of many important technologies of the ancient world, including wood lamination, mining, metal refining, vehicle manufacture, leather processing, and later decorative metalworking. Its production was influential in the Industrial Revolution, and furthered commercial development of metallurgy and engineering. Armor was the single most influential factor in the development of firearms, which in turn revolutionized warfare. History significant factors in the development of armor include the economic and technological necessities of its production. For instance, plate armor first appeared in medieval Europe when water-powered trip hammers made the formation of plates faster and cheaper. Also, modern militaries usually did not equip their forces with the best armor available because it would be prohibitively expensive. At times the development of armor has paralleled the development of increasingly effective weaponry on the battlefield, with armorers seeking to create better protection without sacrificing mobility. Well-known armor types in European history include the Lorica Hamata, Lorica Squamata, and the Lorica Segmentata of the Roman legions. The male hauberk of the early medieval age, and the full steel plate harness worn by later medieval and Renaissance knights, and breast and back plates worn by heavy cavalry in several European countries until the first year of World War I. The samurai warriors of feudal Japan utilized many types of armor for hundreds of years, up to the 19th century. Early cuirasses and helmets were manufactured in Japan as early as the 4th century. Tanko, worn by foot soldiers and keiko, worn by horsemen were both pre-samurai types of early Japanese armor constructed from iron plates connected together to by leather thongs. Japanese lamellar armor passed through Korea and reached Japan around the 5th century. These early Japanese lamellar armors took the form of a sleeveless jacket and a helmet. Armor did not always cover all of the body, sometimes no more than the helmet and leg plates were worn. The rest of the body was generally protected by means of a large shield. Examples of armies equipping their troops in this fashion were the Aztecs. In East Asia many types of armor were commonly used at different times by various cultures including scale armor, lamella armor, lamina armor, plated mail, mail, plate armor and brigandine. Around the dynastic Tang, Song, and early Ming period, cuirasses and plates were also used, with more elaborate versions for officers in war. The Chinese during that time used partial plates for important body parts instead of covering their whole body since too much plate armor hinders their martial arts movement. The other body parts were covered in cloth, leather, lamella, and or mountain pattern. In pre-Qin dynasty times, leather armor was made out of various animals, with more exotic ones such as the rhinoceros. 
Mail, sometimes called chain mail, made of interlocking iron rings is believed to have first appeared some time after 300 BC. Its invention is credited to the Celts. The Romans were thought to have adopted their design. Gradually, small additional plates or discs of iron were added to the mail to protect vulnerable areas. Hardened leather and splinted construction were used for arm and leg pieces. The coat of plates was developed, an armor made of large plates sewn inside the textile or leather coat. Early plate in Italy, and elsewhere in the 13th-15th century, were made of iron. Iron armor could be carburized or case-hardened to give a surface of harder steel. Plate armor became cheaper than mail by the 15th century, as it required much less labor and labor had become much more expensive after the Black Death though it did require larger furnaces to produce larger blooms. Another advantage of plate was that a lance rest could be fitted to the breastplate. The small skull cap evolved into a bigger true helmet, the bastionet, as it was lengthened downward to protect the back of the neck and the sides of the head. Additionally, several new forms of fully enclosed helmets were introduced in the late 14th century. Probably the most recognized style of armor in the world became the plate armor associated with the knights of the European late Middle Ages. But continuing to the early 17th century age of enlightenment in all European countries, by about 1400 the full harness of plate armor had been developed in armories of Lombardy. Heavy cavalry dominated the battlefield for centuries in part because of their armor. In the early 15th century, advances in weaponry allowed infantry to defeat armored knights on the battlefield. The quality of the metal used in armor deteriorated as armies became bigger and armor was made thicker, necessitating breeding of larger cavalry horses. If during the 14-15th centuries armor seldom weighed more than 15 kilograms, then by the late 16th century it weighed 25 kilograms. The increasing weight and thickness of late 16th century armor therefore gave substantial resistance. In the early years of low-velocity firearms, full suits of armor or breastplates actually stopped bullets fired from a modest distance. Crossbow bolts, if still used, would seldom penetrate good plate, nor would any bullet unless fired from close range. In effect, rather than making plate armor obsolete, the use of firearms stimulated the development of plate armor into its later stages. For most of that period, it allowed horsemen to fight while being the targets of defending arquebusiers without being easily killed. Full suits of armor were actually worn by generals and princely commanders right up to the second decade of the 18th century. It was the only way they could be mounted and survey the overall battlefield with safety from distant musket fire. The horse was afforded protection from lances and infantry weapons by steel plate barding. This gave the horse protection and enhanced the visual impression of a mounted knight. Late in the era, elaborate barding was used in parade armor. Later gradually, starting in the mid-16th century, one plate element after another was discarded to save weight for foot soldiers. Back and breast plates continued to be used throughout the entire period of the 18th century and through Napoleonic times, in many European cavalry units, until the early 20th century. From their introduction, muskets could pierce plate armor, so cavalry had to be far more mindful of the fire. In Japan armor continued to be used until the end of the samurai era, with the last major fighting in which armor was used happening in 1868. Samurai armor had one last short-lived use in 1877 during the Satsuma Rebellion. Though the age of the night was over, armor continued to be used in many capacities. Soldiers in the American Civil War bought iron and steel vests from peddlers. The effectiveness of the vests varied widely, some successfully deflected bullets and saved lives, but others were poorly made and resulted in tragedy for the soldiers. In any case, the vests were abandoned by many soldiers due to their weight on long marches as well as the stigma they got for being cowards from their fellow troops. At the start of World War I, thousands of the French cuirassiers rode out to engage the German cavalry. 
By that period, the shiny armor plate was covered in dark paint and a canvas wrap covered their elaborate Napoleonic-style helmets. Their armor was meant to protect only against sabers and light lances. The cavalry had to beware of high-velocity rifles and machine guns, unlike the foot soldiers, who at least had a trench to protect them. Present today, ballistic vests, also known as flak jackets, made of ballistic cloth and ceramic or metal plates are common among police forces, security staff, corrections officers and some branches of the military. The U.S. Army has adopted interceptor body armor, which uses enhanced small arms protective inserts in the chest, sides and back of the armor. Each plate is rated to stop a range of ammunition, including three hits from a 7.62 times 51 NATO up round at a range of 10 meters. Dragon skin body armor is another ballistic vest which is currently in testing with mixed results. Early Japanese armor, iron helmet and cuirass with gilt bronze decoration, Kofun period, 5th century. Tokyo National Museum, medieval Germanic helmet, medieval horse armor on display at Museum of Islamic Art, Doha in Qatar, plate armor, riot police with body protection against blows, other types. The first modern production technology for armor plating was used by navies in the construction of the ironclad warship, reaching its pinnacle of development with the battleship. The first tanks were produced during World War I. Aerial armor has been used to protect pilots and aircraft systems since the First World War. In modern ground forces usage, the meaning of armor has expanded to include the role of troops in combat. After the evolution of armored warfare, mechanized infantry were mounted in armored fighting vehicles and replaced light infantry in many situations. In modern armored warfare, armored units equipped with tanks and infantry fighting vehicles serve the historic role of both the battle cavalry, light cavalry and dragoons, and belong to the armored branch. History ships the first ironclad battleship, with iron armor over a wooden hull, La Gloire, was launched by the French Navy in 1859, she prompted the British Royal Navy to build a counter. The following year they launched Warrior, which was twice the size and had iron armor over an iron hull. After the first battle between two ironclads took place in 1862 during the American Civil War, it became clear that the ironclad had replaced the unarmored line of battleship as the most powerful warship afloat. Ironclads were designed for several roles, including as high seas battleships, coastal defense ships, and long range cruisers. The rapid evolution of warship design in the late 19th century transformed the ironclad from a wooden hulled vessel which carried sails to supplement its steam engines into the steel built, turreted battleships and cruisers familiar in the 20th century. This change was pushed forward by the development of heavier naval guns, more sophisticated steam engines, and advances in metallurgy which made steel shipbuilding possible. The rapid pace of change in the ironclad period meant that many ships were obsolete as soon as they were complete, and that naval tactics were in a state of flux. Many ironclads were built to make use of the ram or the torpedo, which a number of naval designers considered the crucial weapons of naval combat. There is no clear end to the ironclad period, but towards the end of the 1890s the term ironclad dropped out of use. New ships were increasingly constructed to a standard pattern and designated battleships or armored cruisers. Trains armored trains saw use during the 19th century in the American Civil War, the Franco-Prussian War, the First and Second Boer Wars, the Polish-Soviet War, the First and Second World Wars and the First Indochina War. The most intensive use of armored trains was during the Russian Civil War. Armored cars saw use during World Wars I and II. During the Second Boer War on 15 November 1899, Winston Churchill, then a war correspondent, was traveling on board an armored train when it was ambushed by Boer commandos. Churchill and many of the train's garrison were captured, though many others escaped, including wounded placed on the train's engine. 
armored fighting vehicles aircraft with the development of effective anti-aircraft artillery in the period before the Second World War. Military pilots, once the Knights of the Air during the First World War, became far more vulnerable to ground fire. As a response armor plating was added to aircraft to protect aircrew in vulnerable areas such as fuel tanks and engine. Present tank armor has progressed from the Second World War armor forms, now incorporating not only harder composites, but also reactive armor designed to defeat shaped charges. As a result of this, the main battle tank conceived in the Cold War era can survive multiple RPG strikes with minimal effect on the crew or the operation of the vehicle. The light tanks that were the last descendants of the light cavalry during the Second World War have almost completely disappeared from the world's militaries due to increased lethality of the weapons available to the vehicle-mounted infantry. The armored personnel carrier was devised during World War I. It allows the safe and rapid movement of infantry in a combat zone, minimizing casualties and maximizing mobility. APCs are fundamentally different from the previously used armored half-tracks in that they offer a higher level of protection from artillery burst, fragments, and greater mobility in more terrain types. The basic APC design was substantially expanded to an infantry fighting vehicle when properties of an armored personnel carrier and a light tank were combined in one vehicle. Naval armor has fundamentally changed from the Second World War doctrine of thicker plating to defend against shells, bombs and torpedoes. Passive defense naval armor is limited to Kevlar or steel protecting particularly vital areas from the effects of nearby impacts. Since ships cannot carry enough armor to completely prevent penetration by anti-ship missiles, they depend more on destroying an incoming missile before it hits or causing it to miss its target. Although the role of the ground attack aircraft significantly diminished after the Korean War, it re-emerged during the Vietnam War. And in the recognition of this, the U.S. Air Force authorized the design and production of what became the A-10 dedicated anti-armor and ground attack aircraft that first saw action in the Gulf War.